Hi, I'm Baldwin Burgess. I'm here with my friend Paul Forsythe. Hi, Baldwin. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Good to be in Monaco with you. Yeah, we're in a good place. Uh, we're at the Fund Forum International 2013. Uh, we bump into each other at these events, and again, I'm, I have the pleasure to sit down with Paul and talk frontier markets. Um, from one frontier market man to another, you know, I'm always curious about what your experiences are. But before we get into your effective experience in, in really setting up a frontier market proposition, what got you to look at the frontier markets? Uh, well, my background is, is trying to find solutions for investors where we can find the best investment managers mm. for different markets. Uh, and I've done this for uh, probably the last, 20, uh, the last 25 years. Over the last few years, I've been working with various clients, particularly in the Gulf where I've been based, mm. um, who were looking for new areas of business. They were looking at frontier markets. And we decided we would uh, seize that opportunity and, and develop what we felt was a client solution for an area that is perceived as highly risky yeah. for investors. Um, there are many opportunities for investing in conventional emerging markets, which are now seen as conventional but weren't at the time, like mm. BRICS uh, and what has been identified as the next 11. But in doing that, that's fine. It, it defines certain subsets of emerging markets, but mm. it doesn't really give you full access to maybe 120 countries beyond those where there will be long-term opportunities. And that's what we wanted to try and offer investors, again, by using a best of breed, picking the best guys for different regions around the world. It makes total sense to me that you're actually specializing and focusing only on this because, you know, we've been in this for a few years. Mm. And, and often I think we just really started a bit too early. Uh, it was kind of tricky, but I think your timing is right because now you have investors, they are ready to take a serious look at this. And what they find is a whole compl complicated world populated with uh, a bunch of unknown managers. You prefer to, you would obviously prefer to work with people who are locally based yeah. and you help them figure that out. You set up a, a diversification and infrastructure that allows investors to tap in quite easily, right? Yeah, I mean, what we felt investors were worried about mm -hmm. was risk. Yeah. So by offering a very diversified portfolio, maybe 50 countries, 20 or 30 of the best managers, we think we're overcoming that risk hurdle. But I mean, you mentioned you know, your own experiences. It's been very challenging in emerging mm -hmm. markets. Even now, there are many investors who shy away from the developed emerging markets. Yeah. But there is an appetite, I think, amongst those investors who do think long term and don't want to wait five to ten years into a cycle where you could make money out of uh, Russia or China, Brazil, India, that are, are starting to say, well, we missed that last time. We're not going to miss it again. It's actually no different to Japan in the late 60s, Hong Kong mm. uh, in the early 80s, when you know, these, these countries were seen as you know, really strange. Mm. You know, we're not, how do we get exposure? It's too risky. If we're European, we want to stick to European equities. US, we stick to US equities and fixed income. You know, we can go back only 12 years in these markets mm -hmm. and we look at China and Russia as, let's say, at the high end of frontier. Um, you could only buy vouchers in Russia. Right. You could only buy B shares in China. Yeah. But if you got in at the beginning, that's where you get the returns. Absolutely. As, uh, there's something about it. And, and these markets are increasingly domestic as well. Mm. Uh, because uh, I, was, I was just discussing this earlier today. You can trade in. We, we tend to trade in and out of those things that, yeah. depending on our... A sense of adventure and our risk appetite, but every time the tide goes out, the foreign tide, yes. what you see is a much bigger domestic investor base, and which also means there's a financial industry, it means there's local talent. And uh, Paul, I think you're in the right space to help people uh, find those people to uh, give we, you access to those markets. Oh, well, we believe so. All right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks a lot. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. See you on the frontiers. <laughs>